Hi everybody again. I think it's a it's good time to start because we are already late with 15 minutes. So uh, we will start the next the next session is a round table and we will discuss the benefits of networks for mayors and municipalities. We have a lot of experts here on the table and you will hear a lot of interesting practices and uh, interesting models. So um, I would like to introduce our speakers. Uh, for this ta uh, round table. And I will start with uh, introducing Ginka Chavdarova. Uh, Ginka Chavdarova is executive director of the National Association of Municipalities in Bulgaria. We have also with us Sixto Molina. Sixto Molina is, European, uh, is coming from the European Alliance of Cities and Regions for Roma Inclusion from the Council of Europe. We have Attila Morner. Co-manager of Urban Roma Net Project from Budapest. We have Crystal Danel. Crystal is the chair of the Eurocities Roma Inclusion Task Force in Ghent, Belgium. We have Koster Berkush, a chair from the Roma Education Fund. Welcome to all of you. Uh, for this session, we will have Kalman Mijan, who, who I already introduced to you, moderating the discussion, and I will give the floor to Kalman. Kalman. Sorry for the uh, uh, few minutes of, uh, of uh, technical glitches, but uh, here we are with a great panel. Uh, many people have strong expertise and stake in uh, networks, so we would like to hear from each of you for five minutes, no more, no big long presentation, just what you do and how do you see this network to, to complement your agenda, what would be your advice in, in, in this and all that. And uh, I'm very, very pleased to, to ask uh, my dear friend Kostel Berkus. Uh, uh, he has been introduced by Violetta already, chairman of the uh, Roma Education Fund, which is a multi-country uh, operation. He has been chairing it for many years. Great experience. Kostel, yours is the floor. Last night I was thinking if I need to write something about uh, what I'm going to uh, share with you today. Luckily I didn't do it, uh, otherwise I will end up in producing a paper like this. So I decided that I will go for fishing instead of uh, writing how to fish. Uh, I'm working for the Roma Education Fund. Most of you here, including local municipalities, mayors, uh, local experts are in, in a way or another familiar with Roma Education Fund activities because we work closely with local stakeholders, including you as mayors, you as leaders uh, of uh, local councils, but also you as uh, civil society, because I think the two actors together complement each other in what we call ideal partnership. And maybe this is a, a key word to be used, how to build local partnership, a real one, that enable us to take steps in uh, Roma inclusion or to advance <coughs> with the Roma agenda. Education Fund, it, it is indeed a foundation established in the frame of uh, Decade for Roma inclusion and address the needs of Ro Roma children education to fill the gap and to address also the segregation issue. Uh, some countries are facing with, with the problem of uh, children uh, of Roma origin being placed wrongly in, in the segregated schools, in schools for children with mental disabilities and so on. So us, we are trying to help you overcome this issue. And I think uh, in some places, in some countries, we have gained a lot of positive experience and we have learned a lot during the seven years of uh, uh, working uh, together with the uh, NGO sector, with the local authorities, to overcome, uh, overcome the education gap. Now, I, I did write last night uh, some key points which I, which I think is very important uh, to be used for the ingredients that mayors and local authorities, NGO sector, could uh, 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 could together or jointly uh, learn from each other. Uh, first point is regarding empowerment, because this is maybe the aim and the meaning of uh, coming together in many networks to empower local stakeholders. 
And we as a fund, we are trying to channel financial resources directly to the local stakeholders because people uh, and those who are in, in the need of resources are, are living at local levels. So the critical actor in this uh, composition are, as you, you all know, are the uh, local councils, are the mayors, are the uh, community NGOs based. Uh, an empowerment, it's maybe uh, too complex to give a definition what, what does it require. It's requiring knowledge, it's requiring dedication, it's requiring motivation for taking maybe one of the most challenged issue, which is indeed uh, ensuring that our communities, local community, are much more accessible, are much more inclusive for all citizens. Because the reality is telling us a different story, that Roma are still living at the margin of our society. I have maybe one minute left. I will keep the other points for the second intervention. Maybe another reason why we think and we believe this network, it will be used by, uh, by European Commission, by international organization, by Open Society foundations by Roma Education Fund is sharing the learnings, what we have learned, what works. When it comes to, to Roma inclusion, what works the best? How best to utilize what the Commission are saying to us that there are certain opportunities, funding opportunities for the local authority to be used. So what works? How best to utilize these resources when we uh, talk about infrastructure, when we talk about education, when we talk about uh, housing, uh, employment opportunities and so on. So here I believe it will be the place and maybe during the workshop sessions to share from your experience and us to learn from what uh, works the best in, uh, in setting up uh, uh, a mechanism that will lead us to a better inclusion of, of Roma in, uh, in many of, of European countries. So I think from, from the start, uh, 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 Mr. Chair, this will be uh, the, the, the two points among the nine that I put it. You, you may ask me why nine points. Of course, there are many others, but I think those are the most important that uh, Roma Education Fund believes uh, that uh, mayors and us as international organization we can use for the ingredients uh, of uh, how to build a better inclusion places. Thank you very much. And, uh, Costa has, uh, has given the other speakers a very good example in terms of limiting all those things that he wanted to say to the most important empowerment and uh, sharing knowledge, uh, sharing best examples. By the way, uh, probably we should think of also having in the future an award of sharing bad examples because we all know how easy it is to construct projects in a way that they don't succeed to achieve uh, those results that we are uh, trying, my organization included, we do many mistakes and I think the best is really, uh, it's very good to learn from best examples and the best is to learn from the worst. But I would like to ask now Christel, who is the chair of the EuroCities Roma Inclusion Task Force, to introduce what EuroCities is doing and what she believes in. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Um, let me first tell you how the Task Force on Roma Inclusion came about. It came about in 2011 um, because uh, local authorities were knocking at the door of Eurocities, facing problems as a consequence of the enlargement of the EU. Lots of people moving from Eastern and Central Europe to the Western European cities. Okay. Uh, they were having problems housing the people, uh, accommodating them into the um, labor market. Uh, it was putting pressure on their social services. Um, so we then decided to start it up the task force on Roma inclusion. Um, by now, 15 cities have joined this task force, but an extra value of this task force is that we are also closely working together with other networks. That's also one of the reasons uh, we have joined uh, this network. 
Uh, we are closely working together with the Council of Europe, European Commission. Uh, now, uh, since June, we have been in contact with the Open Society Foundation. Um, what are the main ob objectives of this task force? Um, actually, uh, we also want to have an exchange on uh, good practices, other cities, how uh, they are managing uh, the situation in, in their cities uh, regarding to Roma. Um, we want to influence the EU policy because um, uh, one of the main things is that uh, a lot of times people are looking at the member state, but actually it are the local authorities who have to deal with the reality. Okay? Um, so they are the ones uh, who have to uh, look for a solution for the challenges they are facing. Uh, so actually we want to work closely together with uh, the cities of origin because uh, over here you have been having years of experience uh, working on Roma inclusion so it's not the idea that we have to reinvent something that has already been invented. So what we have done so far is uh, we have had our first uh, peer review uh, in Berlin on Roma mediators and uh, there's also been a report written on it. We also had, um, we visited uh, the local contact point over there that is also working on uh, the inclusion of the new uh, EU citizens. And um, one of the things we also monitor is that when it comes to the national strategy on Roma inclusion, that local authorities are being involved into the whole process. One thing we have noticed is that they haven't been involved, so we are hoping now with the implementation of the strategy that there will be more attention for uh, local authorities. And uh, last June, we first had our first uh, discussions on transnational cooperation. Uh, what we have noticed is that uh, the cities in, uh, that are part of the task force, uh, they have been setting up uh, transnational corporations with cities of origin. So uh, what we now have in mind is to make that in a more structural way. So not that, not that it's... Uh, the initiative of the cities, but that uh, it can be part of a more uh, structured initiative. And then uh, now in November, we have our next meeting coming up, uh, which will be on uh, Roma inclusion on the labor market. Okay. What I think could be of extra value here, being part of this uh, meeting, is that uh, the cities that are now part of uh, the Roma task force are especially uh, Western European cities. But I do think it's important to be into discussion with the cities of origin, and I think a lot of them are represented here today. So I think uh, it could be interesting for us to sit around the table and to have that discussion on how best we can work together. Thank you very much, uh, Christel. Um, so, uh, two, uh, two exciting ideas, partnership between uh, uh, cities where Roma come from and where they uh, migrate. Uh, I think it's very, very exciting and uh, hopefully you will, uh, you will pursue this as well as the involvement of local authorities in the implementation of, uh, and I would perhaps add if I may, also figuring out how to incentivize and how to uh, financially support those who undertake uh, uh, Roma integration programs are really critical. So uh, now the floor goes to Attila Molnar, who is the co-manager of a very high-tech sounding uh, organization, Urbak Romanet project, uh, Attila. Uh, uh, I'm talking about a project, but uh, you know, it's a it's a framework what Urbact gives for uh, the cities joining the, uh, these partnerships. It's a nine-city project, the Romanet. Uh, we have um, two Spanish, two Italian cities, uh, Slovakian uh, city, 
one from the Czech Republic and two from Hungary. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a partner from France, uh, uh, suburban uh, area of Paris. Uh, and uh, Urbex um, is an urban regeneration network. Uh, Mm, supporting projects uh, from the from the environmental sustainability to uh, social sustainability uh, and um, our goal was to set up a partnership on Roma issues focusing on the youth focusing on uh, the young Romas and uh, through them we try to uh, engage and involve the other uh, generations of uh, Roma people. Uh, in this, uh, uh, Urbeck pro the Urbeck gives a framework for, for the project, uh, and this framework is uh, just like we have two levels. We have a local level where there are uh, a local support group, uh, all the cities have to form a local support group, and they have to uh, uh, with this local support group, we ha have to work out a uh, um, local action plan for, for the local uh, issues. Uh, and uh, after, after this local level, there is a transnational level where there are a lot of transnational uh, uh, connections uh, and uh, we are, we are uh, uh, try to uh, have a lot of mutual uh, learning. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of uh, connects, uh, uh, bilateral connects uh, by, uh, by the cities, and they try to uh, have, have projects, uh, uh, work out projects for, for the future. Um, but of course, the, the, uh, the, the uh, main goal is to, to have the local uh, action plan and to, to begin a work, <coughs> uh, uh, a strategic work with these communities we have in our towns and cities. Um, and and uh, getting to the finish in, uh, of this program, uh, we, are, we are trying to find some frameworks to <coughs> continue with this work because we found it uh, it's uh, very useful. It uh, makes our uh, our tasks uh, much more easier. Just we heard that uh, that uh, it's it's uh, very important to find out uh, the parallelities, the the existing models, and uh, we try to uh, find the the, uh, the continuity of, of this project. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to Sixto Molina, who is representing the ma most par excellence pan-European organization, the uh, Council of Europe, uh, with its uh, great values uh, when it comes to human rights, democracy, and uh, social inclusion. He, uh, is going to introduce to, the, to you, to us, the European Alliance of Cities and Regions for Roma Inclusion, Sixta. Thank you, Mr. Misay. First, allow me to, to thank as well the European Commission and Open Society Foundations for the invitation to be here in this panel. And let me also today, and as from now, congratulate you for the launching of this new initiative. Uh, I would try to be short as my predecessors and I would try to, to focus on some of the issues already mentioned by Mr. Sardi and how we see those elements to be connected not only with the new momentum that we have now in Europe towards the protection of the Roma community rights but as well linking it to the MERI initiative because I think that there is quite a lot to be do to develop synergies. It is not by coincidence that almost at the same time uh, the Council of Europe adopted this uh, declaration in October 2010 and the European Commission at the same time uh, devoted time and energy to request states to develop uh, national strategies. We can criticize them or not, but at least there is, there is something that has been done and I think that it's clearly uh, a good momentum, as I said because, before, because there is both the political will at national and international level, but as well the human 
and financial resources behind, as we heard before, quite an extensive amount of money available, which allows us, not only you mayors, but as well national authorities and international organizations, to be, I guess, in a unique momentum to profit from this entire situation to develop projects in favor of those who are most vulnerable. So, as I said, it is a, a good momentum and we, sh we have to profit from it. One of the changes that we have introduced in, in the Council of Europe is to avoid now working so much on recommendations and on uh, national policies, on monitoring as far as, as Roma issues are concerned. And we have now decided through the declarations to go a little bit more to the grassroots. And this is where all of you present are of uh, extreme importance. So we could have strategies, we can have recommendations, but if at local and regional level you don't want to implement, you don't have the capacity or the financial resources to implement any policies, at the end of 2020 nothing will be done. So this is would be my, my first message, to encourage all of you to have an active role through the MERI network, but as well through other networks that are now existing, to use this opportunity and to, and to do something courageous one step forward. So the CARUM committee that was already mentioned before by Mr. Sardi is also changing its working methods. Now instead of doing uh, national exchange of, of, of policies, uh, we are most uh, directing our efforts uh, to the um, sort of peer-to-peer -peer reviews. That is to say, it's a demand driven by, uh, by states, they select a specific issue, but it has to be specific, and we invite a number of countries that have similar type of problems to sit on the table, to visit the institutions, and to change experience. Why is it that in Spain this is working? What the, is the experience in Hungary, in Sweden, or in Macedonia? Let me recall that we have 47 member states and this is why we would like to profit from the fact of mixing the experiencings of the West and the East, North and South, which could also be an important element to take into account. So through the CARUM, as I said, we are now focusing on specific issues and how examples of best practices and policies in the countries could be shared with the others to avoid inventing the wheel, to avoid always trying to find new money, but to use the existing resources in a better way. So, on the one hand, we can make, maybe we can profit from the fund that funds are available at European level, but on the other hand, it is also good to use what is already available at national level in a better way. Not always thinking that it is difficult to spend money on Roma issues, because notably in a time of crisis, this might be badly seen by the mainstream population, but it's the opposite. It is by investing in those who are the most vulnerable that you can create links between the entire society in a city or in the country and make real benefits for all of us. The second element that I would like to highlight is one a joint activity with the um, European Commission that is ROMED, which is a training of mediators. I don't want to speak here about mediators or beach builders or mentors or pedagogical assistants, but I would like to invite you mayors of, of cities dealing with Roma issues, not to forget that uh, the gap, as was mentioned by uh, Commissioner Andor, the gap between the policy makers and the Roma community is enormous. And you need to have a way to fill this gap. We have seen, and if you allowed me uh, to, to, to give an example, I was shocked a few weeks ago when I was in, in the Russian Federation speaking to the Roma leaders, and when they were saying, no, I will never ask children of my community to go to school because I had never the chance to go to school before. So this is not in the favor of the community. I mean, it is not uh, to allow them to have access to employment. So there is still a lot of things to be done, and this is where I think that uh, majors of cities should take uh, advantage of this uh, possibility that there is there. In fact, ROMET is, is uh, applicable to all, most of your countries, to make sure that this gap is properly filled, to make sure that they have access to, to school, access to the health services, in particular in some countries where we see that there is a tuberculosis that is once again uh, uh, back, so, and they don't go to hospitals to be uh, vaccinated. So it is the, the mediators or the person that is there to fill the gap who could attract them into the, the mainstream uh, policies and structures. 
If we speak about the alliance itself, I think that the, the alliance uh, has a, a good potential and should be developing synergies with the Mary network because, once again, the idea would be to allow cities and regions having the same type of problems, the same type of issues, with the same type of resources, be it big cities or small cities, to be able to sit together as peers and to exchange views and discuss on specific issues. I think that uh, hopefully combinedly in some events with, uh, with uh, Mary, it is a good opportunity for you to sell and to inform your colleagues that there are in fact best practices in your villages that are working and that maybe they can be expanded, exploited by other cities to see whether this could be applied in their villages in the benefit of the Roma community. I think that that for me is one of the biggest challenge but I'm sure and I'm confident that with the, the work of the Mary and the Alliance and other initiatives, we will assist all of you in making this step forward. Uh, just one additional second to finish. I am not trying to convince you, you who are here today, because if you are here, you are already convinced that you have to do something in your localities. You are the best audience I can have today to, to say, go ahead. But I would like to invite you to communicate and to uh, share your knowledge and experience with the cities that are next to yours. These are the cities that are the most difficult maybe to convince. And this is once again by sharing your experience with your own networks, not only at international but as well at national level, that we can maybe create this necessary synergy in Europe to make sure that we all know what is there, what is available, what is existing, and to make, make the most of the existing practice. So this will be my, my main uh, uh, message today. It is important that we all share our best policies and practices to make advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sixto. You have spoken out of strong experience and uh, have uh, made very strong points on uh, the need of courage, as you probably all know when you enter uh, these projects. Uh, uh, also, let's be honest, sometimes uh, majority populations uh, have strong prejudices and uh, I do know municipalities from our experience which did the opposite in order to gain voters. So, when you figure out what is good for your Roma population, but also good for the majority, as well as for your political cause. This is really fantastic. Peer reviews and uh, horizontal learning, peer-peer learning you mentioned, uh, we will undoubtedly talk about a lot. And uh, definitely, your warning about the gap between the national and the local level, but also often, again, I think we would all agree, between the local level and the uh, segregated Roma communities oftentimes is a challenge and that's why it is so critically important to have a partnership of the local administrations with the NGOs that work uh, with the Roma communities. and. Um, and yes, how to convince the others, we all hope that you will, you will really help us to, uh, to learn. Yes, you have, for many reasons, undoubtedly, been convinced that you have to address the problem of Roma segregation and uh, poverty and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 disadvantaged situations. But how to convince those who are not yet uh, there, it's, it's going to be a huge challenge for us. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sixto, and uh, we mostly have been getting input from uh, international um, networks. Uh, the one that uh, uh, Ginka Chavdarova runs is a national one, but in our region, uh, is an exemplary one that has really been very good in working with, uh, with the municipalities and has shown uh, strong interest in addressing also the Roma issue. I'm sure that it's going to be a long-term uh, 
ever deepening uh, process. So, Ginka, what is your five minutes introduction to your organization and message to the audience? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's really today during this conference our mayors, local authorities uh, receive many, many messages, many, many advices. Maybe for us, for local authorities, in, it is uh, time to start to answer <laughs> these messages. And our first uh, answer is local authorities, mayors, are the best driver for solving of Roma problems. And it is not a uh, uh, declaration. It is uh, our uh, reality because what does mean uh, local self-governance? Self-governance does mean that we take our decision with our uh, our uh, local communities, including Roma communities. It is first. If we didn't take, uh, if we didn't manage, uh, next time this local community will be uh, with new mayor and new municipal council. Second, part of our uh, elected members of councils, of mayors, even today, they are from uh, Roma population. It's normal. And uh, it is why, uh, listening today, I realize there is financial resources, European Commission uh, convince you that uh, they have money. But from point of view of local authorities, I want to tell you, where is this money? It is very difficult, very difficult. Uh, to have real information about possible uh, uh, and uh, concrete useful projects. We, uh, we know very well our problems. Maybe we have our mistakes, but we have our experience, good experience, everyday experience, how to, uh, to organize everyday services for Roma and for other uh, population. And uh, it is why my second message is more like explanation. Our association of uh, Bulgarian municipalities, we decided to support our members, mayors, who work and in these municipalities, maybe we have 264 municipalities, in uh, 70, 72 municip two municipalities, the Roma population, uh, more than 10%. It is concentrated, good part of our local communities. Work with these uh, mayors, with these uh, uh, municipalities. We decided to support all experience, all good practices. And I invite you today, afternoon, to listen to our mayors. Their concrete uh, experience, how to uh, involve uh, uh, two years before school Roma children and other children, five years, six years, how we received uh, good results three, four, five years ago. And now we continue. And we continue encourage with new results, for example, results about culture, how to uh, about culture results, I mean, uh, to eat in normal table with normal conditions, uh, to, to create new traditions uh, for, this, for, for these children. And uh, last uh, message, uh, network of mayors. Trust me, I created many, many networks, even international network. I mean, NALAS, we created... Uh, network of uh, association of local authorities in southeastern Europe. Uh, network, uh, uh, mayor's networking, it is very specific issue. First, it's busy people. It is decision, decision maker. Uh, they, have, uh, they don't have time to, uh, to receive emails with 100 pages uh, the best information. Uh, if you want to work with mayors, with this network, 
Please follow the specific rules, work with local leaders, with busy leaders, with uh, leaders who want to receive visible results, social results, because it is elected persons, even from Roma, Roma population, but they don't have uh, enough time uh, to participate in very, very long uh, uh, discussions or uh, in not because they didn't want, they don't have time. Expensive time for them. And uh, my message is also uh, to, to follow this specific uh, of uh, mayors. And maybe last one, we create, we started with uh, this network in Bulgaria. Uh, now more than 22 municipalities every day share their experience, receive new information. We will continue, and we know our, uh, our uh, weaknesses. For example, we have best, best practice how to organize uh, educational integration, children, but how to solve uh, house, problem with housing. Please help us, we don't have good experience. And it is uh, why we are open to share good practice and to share also our problems and try to use other uh, internal, external uh, good ideas how to uh, receive real results. Not just to have good national or international strategies. You mentioned it is important to involve local authorities in preparation. Yes, they involve us, but nobody implement after this, these strategies. Nobody implement. They just show we have good national strategy. How many from this strategy go to local authorities, to local, to NGOs to solve problem? This year, next year. And it is why for all international organizations my message is don't trust to papers. Go to local authorities and visit implementation of these good strategies. Thank you. Ginka, thank you very much for, for, for these messages and uh, I think we can all agree in this room that uh, a good strategy is not a good strategy that is thick on paper and looks good on the shelf but one that has a very realistic roadmap to implementation as well as reflected in the national budget, black and white. Without that, a strategy doesn't deserve the name of strategy. And of course, you can also transmit it to your national authorities when they show you uh, strategies without those critical components. Okay, you created the strategy for this to look good, to present it to God knows who, but, uh, but you haven't really created a strategy for us and for the people. So thank you. We have uh, a little less than half an hour. I mostly would like to have uh, inputs, questions from the audience. Uh, um, I do have uh, one to, to all, uh, but please prepare your questions because the most important is really your feedback here. The reflectors make me look like this because otherwise I don't see you. But, uh, but uh, oh, there, is, there is one here. Uh, where is the microphone? We don't have microphone. <laughs> I will. Mm -hmm. Here, here. Yeah. Is, it is. Yeah, yeah. Please. Thank you very much. And introduce all who ask, please introduce yes. yourselves. Can I speak in French or not? Uh, certainement. Certainement. Very well. Human uh, Department. Yes, yes. Now in French. <laughs> I have two comments. 
with respect to the contributions. We have before us several networks, several networks that are very interesting, and all of them are very useful. But each of the municipalities, the local authorities that are present, is standing alone. So how do we do to it? How do we do it with few, little financial resources? How can we have all these networks? We don't know whether they're doing things that are different. So this is a very uh, practical question. How do we go about things? The second comment. We have the work, the sound is cutting out constantly. Um, I am from the département du Val, of the Val-de-Marne. We mustn't forget the national level. We are in France and we have the difficulties from the French government. And we also have the European level. We are, are obliged to say that if we are a local authority. As a local authority, it is extremely difficult to get European funding on so many vertical lines. It is very difficult to put forward an integrated policy that enable ones to receive funds for education, culture, childhood, etc., etc. So when one is a local authority, one must have the opportunity to be listened to by the national and the European authorities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the first question is such that if there was no question, I would have asked. So thank you. Merci bien pour, uh, pour la question. Uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, all of us to relate to it. Let me uh, just also reinforce uh, uh, your second question which uh, we have been tackling with uh, a lot. We call it integrated approach or comprehensive approach. Uh, in the room is uh, Clara Orgovanova, who in Slovakia tried to design, when she was uh, plenipotentiary for the uh, Roma issues, a comprehensive program exactly in the spirit as, as you have uh, mentioned. And, uh, the implementation indeed is very, very difficult. Maybe that doesn't belong that much to, 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 the, to this panel, but certainly to the, uh, to the uh, discussions uh, after, after the panel. But certainly the first question, if, uh, if you have ideas, uh, Sixtop uh, uh, would like to reflect on it first. Thank you. I'd like to answer in French to to take advantage of the fact that the question was put uh, in French. I think that's the key question. There are too many networks, too many initiatives, and uh, the Commission has said this on several occasions. We have to be sure that what is already out there working with good results and that there is no duplication or replication of efforts, of networks, etc. I can only talk on our behalf. We want to inform and implicate Mary and other networks here present to be sure that the activities that our alliance does uh, isn't being done by somebody else. What is very important, it, it, it would be absurd to conduct activities to which everybody is invited. You do not face the same problems. If there is something on housing, for instance, and a specific theme regarding housing, the citizens and the mayors, perhaps not even the mayors, the technicians, it's not always the mayors that are going to be able to attend, the technicians at local level who are, li who are working with this problem. We have to target the participant well, and also target the cities that are to participate. One further thing, the possibility of publicizing the outcomes of the work so that everybody via the internet or another way is aware of the results. It would be ridiculous to have a city like Paris with the problems that are specific to Paris, 
that would uh, participate with a city that has f much uh, fewer inhabitants. Um, the two aren't comparable. So if we are transparent and if uh, we uh, are able to share our results, we are, will be able to use our financial resources in a reasonable manner and we will be giving the practical, useful possibility with results so that the people, the relevant people in your sphere can take part in the, the activities that are important to you. If we have meetings for 200 participants, it is very expensive and uh, the interest is par it's almost nil. So this is uh, my plea to you that we have a direct line of communication to draw from the experiences of everybody and to do our best in order to render a good service to you. Thank you. Uh, I am the mayor from the county of uh, Constanza and I am head of the association of uh, villages from Romania. Uh, in, in Romania, we have a sizable Roma population that uh, otherwise invades uh, the European uh, space and, uh, and of other countries, um, like the colleagues from us uh, from France that are sitting ahead of us. Uh, we are present uh, here at this um, meeting because uh, we would like to voice uh, through the Mary uh, network our request uh, as a European country um, towards the European Union to um, provide further funds on various programs for the Roma population. It is uh, quite right that uh, we have to go down to the grassroots of the problem. We have to go down the communities, um, education, health care of the Roma population, but we should neglect the housing aspect because uh, if we were to have uh, the possibility to build those uh, uh, build housing for them, then we could uh, uh, provide them uh, decent living uh, standards in their own country, so keep them at home, uh, not going uh, vagabonding through the whole of Europe. But f on the other hand, we should try to uh, respect their tradition and try to provide uh, work um, for them in their own country. The local uh, public administration never neglected the, the Roma population and it acknowledges that they exist and they are trying to uh, uh, provide for social inclusion through all the programs we have had until now in all areas of activity. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to be present here, not only as a, not only um, the, the, the local authorities, but the non-government organization. We are really need, in need of uh, participation of the non-government organizations, NGOs, uh, ensuring uh, transparency. Um, we need your help. Uh, so that the Roma population is not moved into ghettos at the border on, on the outskirts of the settlements and they should be kept within the settlement itself, with the, within the city boundaries in itself. I believe this is the, uh, the solution uh, uh, besides communication between association and international organizations that are dedicated to promote uh, Roma inclusion. Uh, financial uh, resources should also be allotted for health care, for education and uh, professional training. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, 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 turn back to the, uh, to, the, to the panel because uh, I'm not sure if somebody would also have somebody else also wanted to reflect on the first question, which for this panel is actually the most critical. During the uh, uh, afternoon and tomorrow, we will uh, discuss uh, many of the sectoral issues, including housing. Uh, and thank you very much for, for the principles that you have so rightly uh, 
uh, laid out. But let's, in this particular short panel, let's really focus on what you expect from the networks. From the networks that uh, unite you, uh, Ginka said very rightly that you are all very busy. So uh, we should serve you in a way that serves you and doesn't serve our bureaucratic interests. And that is very, very important. And in that sense, uh, if, if we can get uh, further ideas and also what should be the goal of the networks and what should not be the goal of the networks. So these are the issues perhaps that we, uh, we need to discuss in the remaining 10 minutes or so. But I don't know if, if any of you would like to uh, costel perhaps. There is a need to follow up on uh, Kinga's point, uh, which I think is uh, the most critical. Take us back with the foot on the ground, uh, and uh, it's exactly pointing out the expectation that some of you, or most of you, are having uh, towards the Mary Network. From my point of view, what Mary Net Network could give to all of us, uh, not to du duplicate what already exists, it's exactly the channel that we all need to link those who are fishing with the others who have the fishing tools. In this case, to link local level, local authorities with the national or European uh, institutions. Because there is a huge gap. It was pointed out, this is a paradox maybe of Romania, that we, we ask for more money to be allocated by the time that we are not able to spend the money that it was given to Romania, for example. Only 8% of uh, uh, European social funds it was spent for the period of 2007-2013. It's a pity, but this is a reality. I don't want to blame local authorities for this reality, because in, in most of the cases are the blame to be taken by the central government. Now, how we can use this channel, it's exactly to make the link and how best to utilize the financial resources that is given per country allocation to be uh, uh, ac accessible, to be accessible for local authority. Because as you all know, there is a filter in between, isn't it? There is a filter with sometimes the managing authorities working heavily and they are doing as, as much as they could. Now, maybe two, three other points that I, I would like to add, and I, and I think your point it was very uh, uh, legitimized to, to say that mayors are busy. That's true. But they are the leaders of the local people. They have to take over responsibility for everybody. The main question of our panel is what are the benefits? Well, I, I will point out three benefits. First is the economic benefits. And I don't think that we are here to convince you that Roma inclusion brings us as a local community economic benefits. Instead of having them unemployed instead of keeping them at the margin of our society, the economic benefits of ensuring that all citizens have access to economic development, health services, education, and so on. Uh, so it's not me or us here to convince you. We are here to talk how best to utilize knowledge, resources, available uh, funds to best address the needs of our community. Second benefits is social benefits. So we all know that in our country there is a negative attitude towards Roma. For example, I will give maybe an example from the country that I'm coming from. Over 70% of, in Romania, over 70% of the majority population, they don't want to have Roma as neighbors. So that's an indicator. So how to, 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 to address this social gap, this uh, attitude gap that exists between majority and minority? And last reason, or benefit, is political benefit. You are mayors here, most of you.
In some, in some cases, taking steps for Roma inclusion can bring you uh, some political gains. But in most of the cases, because of the, so to say, the negative attitude of mainstream population, addressing the Roma problem by taking projects, uh, building roads, uh, uh, education programs and so on, it doesn't bring you political gains because the mainstream population attitude it is as it is. So you have actually to work on the both sides. On the one hand, convincing the, the, the local community that it is in the benefits, not only as you being a mayor of locality, but in the benefit of the mainstream society, to have Roma children better educated than they are today, to have Roma children closer to the uh, other children as well, not placed in a separate classes, to have Roma children being educated and trained to access labor market. Otherwise, they will be left jobless uh, and inactive citizens. So those are, uh, from, 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 from my view, what we have to underline and to acknowledge that you as politicians at the end, you as elected people, you have the decision making and you have the tools to take steps in having local community much more inclusive than our society as a whole it is today. And uh, I will conclude by saying that maybe to, to us as donors and to us as maybe European institutions or those who have resources, that we have to sometimes go much closer to you and find innovative ways to channel resources that we are having in order to reach the people who are in the most need or the people that have higher motivation to take steps in ensuring a, a better society because this is what we, we call for all. Thank you very much, Costa. It's always the, a pleasure to hear you, Costa, uh, speaking on the basis of uh, multiple layers of real-life experience, and I think uh, these are very wise points. I want to reflect on something that Ginka said very briefly about uh, social housing, Roma housing uh, issues. Uh, in the room is also a very dear friend from the European Commission who designed, uh, I don't see him, but he is in the room, who designed a special vehicle and now tirelessly trying to build pilots in, uh, in also in Bulgaria, Ginka, in Bulgaria, Romania, and other new member states on that, and, and again, um, these pilots are going very, very slowly. Uh, some perhaps will be introduced here uh, during the, uh, the panels, but it's, it's such a great opportunity really to use EU funds for, for that. And I would like to learn during the, the day and, and also tomorrow morning how, you know, what is missing, how can we also help you to access these funds uh, uh, better. But uh, in the remaining little time, I really would like to have at least some of the, uh, the people who want to talk uh, address the uh, panel. So I would like to ask three people, this gentleman with the microphone, then the lady, and then the gentleman behind him. And I am afraid that all the rest of the questions will have to be raised uh, in the uh, subsequent panels. Please. Yeah. Um. Ich bin, uh, ein I'm uh, a representative of the Roma office in, uh, in Germany and we're a standalone organization of Roma people. I feel that the problem is in the room itself. We aren't objects, we Roma. We aren't uh, objects that are processed by mayors, by former socialist commissioners, etc. We are subjects. And if we are not viewed as um, subjects at the same eye level, if we are viewed as deficits of uh, ye, of uh, deficits of the Mm, society based on uh, the majority, there will never be the integration of the Roma people. 
where there is a lot of money, there are a lot of people as well. This is an old expression. There's a lot of money here and a lot of people are come, have come. But uh, where is the money headed to? That's the question. And I've I've just made a tour of the Balkan countries. 80% of the money doesn't get to the Roma people, but it remains at bureaucratic level. The same applies to France, Germany, the UK. 80% of the money that is earmarked for the Roma are left at administrative level and 20% actually get to the Roma people. If this ratio does not change, then there will not be an, the integration of the Roma people. But a war of Indians, uh, just like what happened 100 years ago in the USA. Thank you very much. Before, before uh, giving the floor uh, to you, uh, I very much agree that uh, it's important to follow the money and see whether it does arrive to, to those intended. But I would, though, uh, take an issue with you is that in this room anybody would take the Roma as objects. Uh, so let's give the benefit of uh, or the assumption of decency to people and uh, until they prove uh, otherwise that this is not the case. Uh, the case is that, uh, that we all work on the basis of uh, what you've said, that Roma are as much subjects of the society as anybody else. So please. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Unfortunately, I will support the first part of uh, 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 his statement. I'm Roma too. I don't know why, but always I start feeling like objects, never like subjects uh, when we speak about Roma integration. My, uh, actually, I have appeal. This network that we are going now to establish, please make sure that mayors will finally understand that Roma are different. They have faces. They have faiths, they have wills, and when they design their plans for Roma integration at local level, they should take into consideration exactly that. Not all, not all Roma actually needs housing policy, no? Not all Roma needs education. Some of Roma are very regularly visiting and attending the schools, but what about those Roma that already are well educated, but really well educated. They are staying unemployed. And I will give you an example. Mrs. Uh, Chavdarova told that in Bulgaria we have municipalities that have more than 10% Roma populations. I would like to say that there are uh, municipalities with more than 30% even, and when you go to municipal administration, you will see a 0% of Roma in this administration, and at the same time, Roma with high, uh, with university degrees stays, stayed unemployed. When we put the policy uh, about Roma, uh, on the table of discussion. Take into consideration two things. We need different policies for different members of the community. We don't need always to say just Roma. Maybe we need to say all the Roma, uh, ill Roma, or Roma that don't go to school. And the second thing is we should and especially this is the bill for, to the mayors. If you want to develop your regions, your territory, take into consideration Roma are part of, part of your territories. You can't leave them like enclaves to sit uh, somewhere in the, in the municipality and at the same time uh, 
you to claim money to develop your region without investing in Roma territories, but also in the relationship between people, because the relationship between Roma and non-Roma are really very weak. And we should really invest in that. Relationships between Roma and non-Roma. And the lady from Romania, I'm Roma and I really want to uh, benefit of my right, like European citizen, to go what Wherever I want, maybe I want to go to Brussels, I don't know, next year I will move to there. I'm Roma. What the problem I will create to you if I go to Brussels? And why we put always uh, the Roma migration like invasion in your countries? But there are many Bulgarians that also leave Bulgaria every day because of poverty. Thank you very much, and uh, I would like to uh, uh, give the opportunity to that gentleman to address the panel, and uh, then we will turn back to the panel for last thoughts, and then... Uh, Thank you very much, Chair. I'll be very brief. My name is uh, Istvan Sheter Radic. I represent uh, Uska, which is a small village in Hungary. And I'm at the same time a member of the uh, Committee of Regents of the EU. So uh, let me wholeheartedly welcome you on behalf of that uh, forum. We uh, have a plenary session today in Brussels, but uh, I sent a proxy on my behalf so that I can attend this conference and then report back uh, to the uh, Committee of Regions. My specific question is uh, ad uh, addressed uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Berkus. Uh, we implemented uh, a uh, project a few years ago. Uh, our, uh, the 80% po of our population uh, are Roma. We were supported by the Hungarian government uh, f for that project. My question is uh, this. Could perhaps the uh, Mary Network uh, initiate uh, its own projects, uh, which uh, could perhaps be uh, funded uh, by the uh, Roma Education Fund uh, directly, so we could uh, eliminate uh, this way uh, national governments, and I think uh, it could uh, only make uh, the effort more successful and efficient. Uh. So I will first ask Costa to reflect on this, and I think he has almost reached his nine points, but if there is anything very, very, very important to add it, and also I would like to ask the panel to, to reflect on, on what we have heard, and really last points on, 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 the, on, on the network, and perhaps now to concentrate on uh, best advice to, to Mary. First. I'll be very short because I would like to give the opportunity to, to other panelists to, to speak out. Yeah, we are a bit uh, late, so, so I ask everybody time. to be. Yeah. First of all, thank you for the question, and the short answer uh, will be definitely yes, because from our experience, I will kindly advise some of you. Uh, sometimes I don't like you know books, but uh, those reports I don't want to undermine them are very uh, important from the knowledge point of view. Uh, I will tell you one experience which is maybe an example to, uh, for your questions. We are working in Serbia with 56 localities and with 306 stakeholders, including here local schools, NGOs. So this is a frame of cooperation. RDF is co-financing this prog program with World Bank and the Ministry of Education in Serbia, for example. This shows that we, as a foundation, we would like very much to work directly with local authorities and address the local problems. Because this was the main mission and the tools that was given to the foundation to channel and to target the problems at the very local level. Of course, at the policy level, we work with the national governments. But at local level, we work with uh, uh, local authorities and NGO sector. So, we do have in, in Hungary a number of programs and projects, local projects, which are run 
directly by schools or by local authorities. The same in Bulgaria, in Romania, as, 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 as well in other countries. Uh, and I will advise you to approach, uh, uh, of course, uh, advertising the foundation work, uh, to, to approach us here in Budapest. We have a, an office here, our headquarters. We have an office in Romania, which is an implementing office for structural funds. But for those of you, Macedonia, uh, Serbia, <laughs> Croatia, uh, Albania, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia, I think I said most of the country that we are working, please uh, do approach us with education initiatives. We will very much like to share our responsibility and, and funding in uh, reaching the goals and achieving the, the uh, so what we are saying, the better education for Roma children. Thank you, and uh, I would also like to add that uh, your urging is very well taken. Um, direct European funding for the type of causes that the Roma Education Fund is pursuing and, and some of the other uh, uh, organizations, it's really very, very important, particularly in cases where uh, there is great challenge and problem with uh, spending European funds in general in some of the countries and particularly on, on, on those uh, social causes that, that we are discussing here. So your point is well taken. I hope you will take it to, uh, to, to Brussels and also that you will also guide us, help to lobby for this kind of things because we very much agree with you. Uh, Crystal. One thing I want to stress on is uh, when it comes to funding, I think it's important that uh, the money not only goes to the member states, but that uh, local authorities themselves and communities, Roma communities, local Roma communities also have access directly to the funding and are not depending on their member states. Uh, another thing I want to stress on is if I'm saying that as a network we want to uh, work together uh, with the local areas, it's not only the local authorities but also uh, the local communities and I think that's where the, uh, this meeting and the Mary Network and Open Society uh, Foundation can be of extra value for us. Okay? And uh, thirdly, uh, I think uh, it is correctly that if somebody wants to move to Brussels, he should have the right uh, to move to Brussels. But that it's also important that uh, we make sure that that person who moves to Brussels is comfortable over there and can be well integrated into the society. Thank you very much. Attila, last word from yeah. you. <laughs> we heard about uh, um, the need. Please. Okay, we heard about uh, uh, that we need more targeted uh, funds for uh, for uh, the development with the Roma communities, and I think uh, uh, we don't have to forget that uh, that we have the, we have the uh, European uh, Regional Development Fund because uh, we we could uh, we could uh, um, talk about. Uh, about the priority fields of Roma policies and Roma inclusion. We can talk about education, we can talk about employment and uh, so on. But I think uh, uh, the, the only approach we can uh, achieve a real uh, change, uh, I think it's, it's the, the integrated approach. And uh, we have to talk about that and we have to let the, the settlements and cities of Europe to have an insight into this uh, 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 developments uh, with, with, with the integrated approaches. I think it's, it's very important uh, task of this kind of networks. Very shortly, please. Yes, uh, I think that uh, taking advantage of the title uh, of the meeting, making the most of EU funds, and taking into account as well some of the questions, I think that the first thing that uh, Mary could maybe do to, to answer those questions is to identify why there are so little number of projects that have been granted EU funds. We said before, much money is not used, and those used are not for the Roma. 
so uh, even it's a smaller percentage. So is it because the procedure is too complicated? Is it because you don't know how to do it and obviously these long procedures take so much time that at the end you said we will not be successful, let's forget it? Is it because there is a missing link between the municipalities and the national authorities who have to present them? I don't know. I think that in each country it might be different. But I think that one of Mary's role will be to understand, together with all of you, how to make really possible that those who have good projects can really present them with good chances of being funded. I think that this is uh, for me vital because most of you, I think that most of you have maybe not presented projects because you are discouraged even before starting and those who have made projects might be confronted with little results so that they are not accepted. So I think that this is the step to make by, by Mary to, to make better use of EU funds. Thank you. Very, uh, very well taken. We have already heard two for the network, for, for you as a network, uh, one, to advocate for direct funding from the European Commission, we can contemplate that together. The other, to really figure out why and how funds don't arrive to, to the beneficiaries. And uh, again, you represent the best examples, but there are so many not good examples. I don't know how many of you saw this great documentary, The School, which uh, was about the story of how a school integration uh, in Romania, but it could be in any other countries, uh, project ended up to, uh, to, uh, to be wasted and uh, segregation remaining in, in place. Um, so, Ginkas is the last word. Again, the last one. <laughs> Two maybe more uh, concrete uh, expectations for uh, this uh, network. First, it was votre uh, deuxième question, monsieur. Your second question, sir. This network can disseminate good national decisions. National, I mean, legislation, uh, also practical. Uh, for, uh, uh, for supporting uh, of uh, Roma integration. We don't have enough information about this. And second one, it was mentioned, even in Bulgaria, we are a small country relatively, but in different regions we have different kind of Roma, with different needs, wishes, and this good practices that is possible to, dis to disseminate must include this information about a uh, specific of area of local community uh, where was uh, received a uh, good result. And the last uh, uh, maybe proposal for uh, this network. I know it's always difficult but nobody here mentioned the power of media. We need support to organize strong media campaigns and also support for many, many decisions in this area. Without media support at local and national and European level, uh, it will be impossible to receive results. And it is why I think this. Uh, this uh, network can help to organize, to support uh, good ideas. And the last answer of the uh, question, I don't think that two, three, four Roma working it in local administration is uh, the best practice. We have this kind of municipalities, you know, and they report, I have Roma in my administration, and they forgot after that. Uh, and Every problem they, uh, uh, answer, they go to this three or four uh, person. The, the big problem is how to use all administrative capacity of municipality work uh, for the best decision. It is the problem, not again separate, three person. Ah, it is Roma problem, go to this three person. They don't have even enough power, enough uh, uh, contact, communication, finances, everything to, to, to solve problems. 
It is not good just to report. I have three Roma, I can sleep. I work good. But how to involve all administration, all administrative capacity, all elected persons work for uh, the best decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you very much for, for a very serious panel. Also for very good... Uh, uh, Very good questions and, and remarks from you. Uh, but I want to say on behalf of the making the most of EU funds for Roma organization that uh, we will definitely work in a way that it assures complementarity with, uh, with those uh, networks that, that are on the ground. We will support them uh, and we will take care of uh, what Ginka said very, very wisely, together with them, <laughs> that we will not bother you with, uh, with competitive uh, requests or, or, or agendas, because we really appreciate uh, that you are very busy at home to solve problems, among others, those that, that we are contemplating here. And, uh, what the gentleman mentioned about the Roma being subjects and not objects, I think in this room it's a given, but it's always very good to be reminded and to, uh, to, to also see how, how, how to improve on, on, on this uh, uh, very obvious principle even more. So, uh, thank you very much and let me give the floor to... Uh, Violetta, who is going to guide us uh, for the next, uh, for the lunch and the rest. Thank you, Kalman, and uh, thank you very much for the good discussion. I hope that uh, this was a, a good trigger for the next workshops to come. And uh, this is going to be my job to explain to you uh, what is coming next in the afternoon. We are a little bit late, but still we can try to keep the agenda. So um, at 2 o'clock the workshops will start and we are having outside already signs for each workshop. Please pay attention on the language of the workshop. Also we, we are going to have people to help you if you feel lost uh, at 2 o'clock where is uh, 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 which workshop. So at 2 o'clock the workshop will start.